Hey everyone, welcome back. And today we have a special treat for you. Today we have Taylor Strecker, who has her own podcast, okay, Taste of Taylor Pod on Dear Media. Also, she has a show called The Taylor Strecker Show, and she is joining Vanderpump Rules alum Stassi Schroeder and her husband, Bo Clark, for her Mommy Dearest tour. Before we jump in, you guys know how this works. If you haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And with that, Let's jump right in. It's time for all your binge-worthy pop culture news. Welcome to Up and Adam. Taylor Strecker, welcome to the channel. How are you? Hey, boy. Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you on. I know that we've been talking a little back and forth. And we almost had you live on stage in New York City, but of course yes. we know sometimes scheduling things come up. So this is just, I mean, this is amazing for me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm sorry it took us so long to get here, but here we are, darling. Here we are. Now, I wanted to jump right in because you are, I mean, you have a very popular show. You have a very popular podcast with Dear Media. Yes. And I wanted to kind of give our viewers sort of a backstory on you because you have the Taylor Strecker Daily Show, right? Yes. yes. And then you have the Taste of Taylor Pot. Yeah. So for maybe new listeners who might not be aware as to the topics that you cover and what you go over, what would be the difference between your daily show and your podcast? It's a really good question. And sometimes I actually I, like people find it really confusing and I'm like such a workaholic. Like I want all the jobs. I also, I want all the money. So that's why I have all the jobs, but like, it is interesting because we live in a time now where I do recognize that sometimes like doing too much confuses people. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so happy whenever I get the opportunity to like explain the whole thing. Cause it is, there's a lot of synergy and they're all very interconnected. So just to rewind a little bit, I started off in radio. So I graduated from college and within like six months, I got a job hosting a morning radio show for Cosmo Magazine. So it was called Cosmo Radio and it was on Sirius XM Radio. So it's like where I started my career, like super young. And it was kind of unheard of because radio was like, radio is kind of like comedy where you have to really like pay your dues and like you don't really hit your stride until like your forties. So when I came in and like Sirius was kind of like, radio but like kind of a a new evolution of radio so it was like it was like the in between between radio and now podcasting if you will so daily radio was just something i did i mean i was at sirius for like 12 years so i did a four hour talk radio show no music just commercial breaks so it was like a marathon run it was insane so i'm just like conditioned to do these like long format shows. So when I got fired from Sirius over something, like uh, honestly to this day, I still don't quite understand why I got fired. Um, and like, even to this day, like a lot of people that work at Sirius, like me getting fired from Sirius scared a lot of people. Cause it was almost like no one understood the rules anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. I like got in trouble because I was doing like a side project which I had to do because I mean, Sirius paid like diddly dick for money. <laughs> so, and I was like allowed to do these side projects and have been doing them for years. But for whatever reason, this one side project I did like ruffled the feathers. I, I don't know if it was that I was working with someone that the company didn't want me working with, or if it was like the language with, with how we promoted it. Like at the very most, I made a mistake maybe in how I promoted it. But like firing was such a harsh reaction. Like I could have like canceled the, the side project. Like there were so many other ways that I could have been like reprimanded if I had somehow breached my contract. But it felt like a little bit of like, um, like making a mountain out of a molehill, the reaction. And a lot of people at Sirius kind of like felt that too. So, um, but yeah, so that's what happened at Sirius. So when I got fired, I was in a panic. I was newly divorced and had just recently come out because I was, you know, dating my now wife, Taylor. So there was like a lot going on. So when I got fired, I was like, I mean, like losing my mind. I called Stassi because Stassi and I had been friends for years. We actually met at Sirius. I interviewed her. And then through that, she actually started, if you're a big fan of VPR, you'll remember she started dating this guy named Patrick, who then eventually ended up on the show. So. Right. She was on, we got, we interviewed. Then like, I feel like a year later, she quit Vanderpump Rules and moved to New York while she was dating Patrick. Then she came back on, still dating Patrick off and on, off and on. So 
technically it's my fault that she started dating Patrick. I pushed that. Oof. I'm you sorry. are the reason for Patrick? I'm sorry. Well, no, technically she is the reason <laughs> for Patrick. So she, so again, Cosmo Radio, she comes on as a guest. This is season one Stassi. I'm ready to rip into her. And she just army and she was like, oh my God, I love your radio show. And I was like, you listen to my radio show? Oh my God, I love you back. So she was a fan of the whole channel. And Patrick is on like middays. I was on in the mornings. So she like fell in love with him through the radio waves, tweeted him. He comes to me and he's like, this hot blonde girl from this reality show DM me or whatever, tweeted me at the time. Like, what should I do? And I was like, you should absolutely reply. Cause like, I was like, if he starts dating her, then there's a chance that I can be best friends with her. And so that's why I pushed it through. I didn't know he was going to end up being such a dick. So, I mean, I knew him and I knew his relationship. So maybe I should have known a little bit, but like, I don't know. I just thought that maybe it would be different with them. Alas, it was not, but so that's how I met her. So anyway, I get fired. I called her at this point. She was doing straight up a and you know, it was so interesting because I had so many people in this industry, podcasting, Patreon, reality TV that I met through doing Sirius. And when I met everybody, when I was at Sirius, it was like, well, I had the big show. Do you know what I mean? Right. But it was kind of smoke and mirrors. It didn't pay a lot of money. You were also like chained to the studio. Like you, I didn't have like a lot of time off. I couldn't really travel. Um, I was kind of like really like stuck to the like, you know, the four hour radio show Monday through Friday. So and I was kind of jealous, like podcasting has just started. And I mean, I know Stassi, Stassi, but like Stassi was making like 10 times the amount of money that I was making it serious to do a 45 minute podcast once a week. So I was like, damn, I kind of wish I could get into podcasting. So when I got fired, I was like, fuck, I'm going to get into podcasting. So um, that's kind of how I started on the podcasting frontier. But then I was actually in a non-compete with my contract with Sirius. So I couldn't work in audio and radio or even podcasting for an entire year. Wow. Yeah. Which is like kind of crazy. Like I get if you quit a job that you can't leave them and breach contract. But I feel like if you get fired, it's like, well, you don't want me. Like, what am I supposed to do for an entire year in yeah, the industry that's that I work in? It, I think it's, I, I, I think it's ridiculous. So I was able to get out of my non-compete. But by that point, all the podcast deals I was doing and brokering, we realized that we were potentially going to be in breach of contract again. So like all those went away. So then I was kind of like left, like, what am I going to do? I ended up going to a very small radio station that kind of mimicked the, um, like the, the, the basically structure of Sirius. And so that's how I got back into, into doing my daily radio show. So it was like independent, but I kind of took what I was doing at Sirius and I brought it over to another network. Um, and it was subscription based, just like Sirius. So to wrap your head around it, it was basically like what my Patreon show is now, but it was just like with a different company for like, I think it was like two or three years. And then I eventually rolled after the pandemic, I decided to stop doing a live radio show because it was impossible to do and the studio space was so expensive. So um, I ended up um, going over to Patreon. And so that's what The Daily Show is. So The Daily Show is like my roots. It's like me doing radio. And then the podcast initially was kind of supposed to be like a promotional mechanism for The Daily Show. So it, it's called Taste of Taylor because we would take a like a segment or an hour or like whatever um, from like the best of that week from the Taylor Strecker show. And we would put it on Taste of Taylor. So that's why it's called Taste of Taylor. Cause it was just like a sampling of what I was doing every single day. Right. So from a business standpoint, the daily show is subscription based. So that's ad revenue coming in, but then the podcast was ad based. So I also liked straddling the fence with those two, but they were very interconnected. And then when I moved over to Dear Media, we decided to change it and just make it like Taste of Taylor, its own entity with like celebrity interviews and solo podcasts and like completely new content. So that's how we got to where we are today. Wow. Okay. So this is quite the story. And I love how business minded you are. You're like, let's just kind of piece this out, which is sort of, I mean, I have a similar story without it being as wild, but we have a podcast version of our YouTube channel and just created a sister channel because YouTube has an algorithm where after every three videos that you post within 24 hours, they stop pushing out the videos. No way. So, yeah. So there's always a way, like you said, to sort of maneuver around it and try to yep. figure out new ways to 
keep putting out the content and also growing your business. Listen, I love that. All right. We're already, so you manifested a friendship with Stassi. I'm manifesting a friendship with you right now because I'm already (laughs) digging this conversation. I'm in it with you. Honey, I am a professional social climber. I will teach you thy ways. I mean, (laughs) yes, please. I'll pay it forward. I love this. Well, you also mentioned your wife, Taylor, and yes. I was just perusing your Instagram as no, one would. please, please. I see that you're on this baby journey, which is so exciting and you have a lot going on. And then yes. let's, why not add one more thing to the plate? How oh, was that? Yeah, I know. So, well, here's the thing. I, I really identified as straight my whole life. So I can, how do we just like envision, like I get married, I have kids, maybe I'd be a stay at home mom. Like I grew up in a very traditional family. And then when I got this career in radio, I fell in love with it. So honestly, it became like one of the greatest loves of my life was my career. And I had never anticipated that. Um, and, but like, as time went on and, you know, I was married for five years to a man, I call him my husband. Um, and a lot changed in that marriage. And I grew and I changed and evolved a lot. And, you know, I didn't see it coming from a million miles away, but I ended up falling in love with a really good friend of mine, my now wife, Taylor. And that's kind of how, like, I had no um, inclination that I was gay, like my whole life. Like, I feel like everybody's story is so different. I'm what you would call a late in life lesbian. So I realized like, basically in the midst of my divorce that I was attracted to my friend who was a lesbian. And I kind of just was like, oh, I'm just like in a divorce frame of mind. Like, sexuality is a spectrum. I'm just going to go with what I want to do. Cause I kind of, when I was like reflecting back on the guys I had dated and the choices I had made, you know, in my relationships with men that like, I never really went after what I wanted. I went after like who wanted me. And this was the first time that like, I really wanted to pursue somebody. And so I did, but like, I wasn't really committing to this being like an identifier for me. I kind of thought it was gonna be like a secret hookup. And every day I just kept falling more and more in love with her. And then I was like, shit, like I just got a divorce. I thought I was going to marry another rich dude. And now like, I'm (laughs) going to be the breadwinner and I'm a lesbian. Like what's going on? So my life, I I guess like, when when you, what's the saying? It's uh, when you make plans, God laughs. So it's like, I kind of realized that I... I'm really good at following my intuition. And I also like see that the universe points you in different directions. So I kind of, I'm a big believer in just like going with it as long as it's working. And then if it's not, you can always pivot. It's not the end of the world. So with that being said, when I fell in love with my now wife, Taylor, I was like, this is kind of great. I don't think I want kids. And like, I feel like we're not going to have pressure of kids. And anyway, fast forward to like, I ended up being with the most heteronormative lesbian on the face of the planet. So of course she wants kids and I always say that I love my wife more than I love not having children. So that's where we are. I mean, she's the one that wants, needs, desires the babies. I I think I could be really happy without kids. I might regret it down the road, but um, yeah, this is kind of like, um, I'm obsessed with her. She's obsessed with having charge. Like she would be miserable. She would resent me if we didn't have kids and I would never want to be playing that role in her life. So yeah, so we're going forward with having kids, but uh, I'm just so long for the, for the ride. I'm scared as shit. You're kind of making me nervous because my husband and I, we just got married. We've been together for 10 years yes. and we just got married in December mm-hmm. and that's all he wanted was to get married. And now of course, after getting married, he's like, we have a 10 year age gap. And he's like, Adam, I want a baby. And I'm like, the hell? Where did that come from? Wait, and now that's making age sense. gap. You, who's the older one in the relationship? He is 39, I'm 29. Okay. So see, this is the thing. The older one kind of gets to pull rank because like technically there is like a biological clock. I mean, women absolutely have it. Men do have it too, though, with sperm. Like the younger the sperm, the better the quality. Um, I'm the same age as your husband. Well, I'm actually 40. So, but see, Tay's carrying. So it buys us a few more years because she's five years younger than me. But like, yeah, this this is the thing. This is when it starts to happen. And I feel like, see, because I'm the older one, I've had way more time to like stave it off because I haven't been the one dying for a baby. But like now that she's a certain age, it's like she's of the age where it's like, we got to shit or get off the pot. Oof, oof. Okay, wow. I see babies in both of our future, honestly. You, oh gosh. Okay. That's a lot to digest. I'm getting anxiety and it's not the espresso. Okay. (laughs) So 
I, first of all, I love and applaud the hell out of you for being such an open book. You're just like, here I am. This is me. I'm Taylor Strecker. Listen yeah. to me on Dear Media or my show. Okay, this is great. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> now I wanted to get into a few things because you have this exciting podcast tour coming up where you're teaming up yes. with your best friend and her husband, which I'm sure is another one of your best friends. I've met Bo yep. a couple of times and just a really great guy, super nice to everyone. And I mean, I, it's not like I've ever sat down and really had a conversation with him, but every time he would walk in, in a little backstory, I worked um, for Lisa at TomTom Tom and Sir, but when I was working at TomTom Tom and he would come in, he was just always so kind to everyone. And you can always tell how someone is, I feel like based on how they treat other people. And so that was always Absolutely. very telling about him. And then you, of course, officiated their wedding, right? Yes, I did. I was their officiant last May in Italy. How the hell do you go from, yes, I'm going to social climb up here. I'm going to rip this woman apart. Oh my gosh, we're going to become best friends to officiating a wedding. Like this is maybe <laughs> we need to write a book. We need to write a book. I really That's do, next. right? How to After social the climb the shit out of your life? Yes. <laughs> I yes. should. But um, I wanted to ask you, know, you about the show. Yeah. Oh, well, no, you go ahead. Oh, you were about to say something. I don't want to stop live you. Live because... show. Yes. <laughs> well, to, real quick, you said, how do we like go from social climbing to being best friends? We've now been friends for like 10 years. Um, and I have to say, being friends with somebody who's like in the public eye, like I'm like, kind of like I'm celebrity adjacent. Okay. But like Stassi's a bona fide celebrity. And I think that I think that there's a lot of people that like are very usury in this you know world that we're in, and I feel like even though I am a social climber, I'm actually a really good person and like a fiercely loyal friend. So um, just over the years, our just relationship would grow and grow and grow, and I got really close to Bo when we were on tour for the first time uh, when we were on the Straight Up Bastasi live tour, and then it was the Bougie Bus tour which got canceled because of the pandemic. So um, I don't know. I just, I, I, I feel like tour the first leg was what like shifted our friendship from just like being like fun friends to like really, it was like deep. Like you're traveling all over the country, you know, you're spending every waking and sleeping moment together. And um, it was kind of like, we were like in a throuple that we didn't ask for me, Stassi and Bo. And that's what really bonded me to Bo. And I feel like when you become friends with obviously your friend, but then you get super close to their partner. I feel like that's kind of like the glue that bonds you forever. So that's definitely how I ended up officiating their wedding was that tour that we went on for sure. I love this. Okay. There's so much backstory and I, I'm just like soaking it all in. And <laughs> now since you are doing this new tour, mommy dearest tour, yes. how just to give the fans, the viewers, or even our community over here, an insight as to what they have to look forward to if they're going to any of the shows, which I'm going to the May 19th one in Fort Lauderdale. I'm so excited to see and Yay! just get an idea. You know, I, I did my first live podcast, three cities, and I couldn't even imagine doing, I don't even know how many cities you guys have. I counted 21 dates on Stassi's yeah. website and it said more coming soon. And I'm like, I know more than 21. I know. I know. How the hell are you going to pull this off? So currently we are at 24 shows. I don't think all of those extra three that I just announced have been uh, formally announced. So there are more coming, but like, I love being on tour, but it's a lot. And like, I have a daily radio show. I have a weekly podcast, you know, I have like social deals. Like I have a lot in my plate. So adding tour is like the straw that breaks the camel's back, but it's too fun. Like there's no way I would never not do it. Um, but Thank God Stassi's pregnant because there is an inevitable end. Like she can't travel in her third trimester. Thank God. So like <laughs> it's guaranteed that like at the end of June, we'll be like officially done touring for, you know, until she delivers and God knows she'll probably be back on tour within like a month of the baby being born. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of shows. Our first tour ever, the Straight Up Stassi live tour, that actually was 24 shows as well, which is like helping us because we're like, okay, we've done it before, so we can do it again. So it's going to be 24 shows. Um, and I think you're right. I think it's like in 21 cities. There's a couple cities where we have a matinee and then a night show because the uh, night show sold out. So it's um, it's a lot. I mean, 24 shows is a lot, um, but we've done it before. So it's like, we have to just keep reminding ourselves, like we lived through it once, we can do it again. But she's pregnant this time. 
I mean, and you're on your own baby journey. There's a lot happening. There's and so lot. you might even get a whole new set of, I mean, I don't know how this works. I've never been pregnant. I've never had a pregnant partner, but I don't know if there's more emotions involved or if there's more like, okay, normally you, this wouldn't be so irritating to me, but I am pregnant right now. So I feel like you go into it. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm getting myself into, but also, like you said, so exciting. You're not going to pass this up. And I think right. one of the first things that came to mind too, because I didn't catch um, the first tour. So now I'm looking at this with like a fresh set of eyes and I'm just wondering sort of, of course you can't share the entire format, but do we right. see a lot of you in the show? So it's kind of the same form formula as last time. So what I, so I technically came on as like an opener. So like I, my job is to like warm up the crowd, get them going. I do like a 10 to 15 minute set. I'm not a comedian. I want to be very clear on that. I have like a deep respect and reverence for comedy, but like, I don't not I, I don't like not mimic. I'm like LARPing as a comedian. So I kind of go up there and like and do a set, but like, it's also like me introducing myself to the audience too. So it's a little bit of like who I am, how I got here. And then there's like a lot of stuff. And I mean, it's actually perfect because it's the mommy dearest tour and my, my stuff in my set has a lot to do with like me and my wife and this baby journey that we're on. So um, I'm like, I happen to be on brand for the show, which is just like, you know, kismet. Um, but it's gonna be, I open then Stassi comes out and she does like her own. I mean, she'll kill me if I say comedy set cause she's also like, I am not a comedian, but she does like an opening monologue. That's fucking hilarious. I mean, beyond, she did it last tour. She's doing it again. Amazing. But we have all, I mean, it's been three years since we've been on tour. So we're all, we're writing all new stuff. So if you saw the first leg of the first tour, you're getting a completely different show from us. It's not going to be the same whatsoever. Um, and then it's going to be like Stassi and Bo. So basically it's like, a little bit of like comedy, a little bit more comedy from Stassi. Bo comes out and they give you like the good, the bad, the baby, which is the podcast they have together. And then I come out and we give you, I, so I'm a monthly guest on Stassi's uh, podcast, Straight Up Stassi, and we do pop culture hour together. So we're gonna do like a pop culture like thing. And then um, we have some other segments too that are gonna be, I feel like, like it, it really is a live podcast, you know? Like if you have elements that you love from all of Stassi's podcasts that she does, we're gonna be hitting on like basically every single one of them, if that makes sense. No, I, I love this. This sounds great. And I feel like you're you're giving us just enough to be like salivating at the mouth. Like, okay, now we need to we need to kind of look into this. What do we have to look forward to? So I think it's great, especially because it's not like you're giving us a spoiler, which I really love. Right. And I do, before we move on to the next question, I kind of want to piggyback off of this really quick. What was your first reaction when you, I mean, for the first tour even, and then just to be asked again, like, hey, let's do a tour together. This obviously has to feel great because it's kind of a, you're fucking amazing at what you do. Please, we I want mean, thank you. you. I'm very bad at taking compliments. You know, so the first tour actually, um, so I guess we started in 2019 and we were both at the same talent agency at that time. Now Stassi's with a different talent agency. I'm still with the same one. And my agents were really pressuring me to go on tour. And I was like, I just don't think my social numbers are there. And I don't know that I, like, if I'm gonna do something, I wanna fucking do it, you know? So I was yeah. like, if I can't sell out, shows I don't want to do this. And I knew Stassi was thinking of going on tour. And I said to my agents, I want you to pitch me to Stassi as like going on tour in whatever capacity, as an opener, as a producer, like whatever she needs, I wanna like offer my services. Cause if I go on tour, build my numbers and grow everything, then maybe in a couple of years, I'll be in a position where I can do a solo tour. So they were like, okay. And I was like, but please, like we're very good friends. So I wanted to make sure that like, I wanted them to do it. So if she wanted to say no, she could say no. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's right. kind of, it's great working with your friends, but it's a little bit tricky. So I always wanted to be like respectful and make her know, like, I'm here for you if you want me, but like absolutely no pressure if it like doesn't work. So she ended up coming back to me and she was like, I'm so fucking relieved. Like, <laughs> of course I want you on tour with me. So, and it was interesting. I mean, she had some other friends that were like in, I would say like maybe like positions of like comedy who I was sure, you know, maybe they were vying for those spots too, but sorry, bitches. I'm the one that got it. So, you, you know, what's so funny too, in the short amount of time that I was around Stassi, when I worked at sir, I learned something that it, and it's a lot of times when you watch people on reality TV, you never know how much of it is actually them or how much they put yeah. on for the cameras. 
And from day one, she was always just no bullshit. And it was kind of very black and white with her. It was just very just right there in your face, right? Mm -hmm. So it's either you you get what you get. And I think that's something that you can appreciate, uh, you know, appreciate about a person. I always know where I stand with her. Like, there's no question. Like, there's I've had some friendships in the past where it's like, you know, the person is like, they don't like confrontation, right? Or they're not great at being like, honest because maybe they're a people pleaser but like at the end of the day that ends up hurting people more because if you're not direct and transparent like I like to know exactly where I am with people and Stassi and I have like such a transparent open honest relationship it's so amazing but like and that's why I knew that we could work together too but I also on my end have to let her know it is okay for her to like set boundaries and say no because I you know I don't want to be I also don't want her like just saying yes to me because she feels bad. Like we both know we can be honest with each other and there'll be like no hurt feelings in the long run. I think that's why we can be friends and work together too because we have that transparency. I think that's why you guys are such good friends because even when you're talking about this and like growing your numbers and you're you're just really, I mean, this is really entertaining to me and just I find you very intriguing because you don't really hold back. You just kind of give it to us like, I am who I am. This is my story. This is what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yes. You, you, like you're giving us the whole story without trying to add little fluff pieces in it yeah. and trying to like paint it as a different picture. You're just like, this is literally it. And I think that's probably why you guys respect each other and have this friendship because I think you are very similar in that way. Well, even like me doing her podcast monthly now, like when she called me, she was like, I have a huge favor. And I was like, what? She's like, would you be a monthly guest on the podcast? I was like, honestly, mutually beneficial. I, I, I absolutely will do it. And like, it's so funny. Cause she's like, she's like, I feel bad. You have so many other jobs. I'm like, yeah, but girl, this is exposure. Like you are my friend. So of course I'll do it. But like, also Stassi, like coming on your podcast, I grow numbers every time I'm on your podcast, every time you fucking post a story with me, like this is, this is how the business works. So it's really funny because we're like always so hyper concerned about overstepping with each other. But at the end of the day, it really is mutually beneficial. So I think that's another reason why I'm here. I'm back on the tour. And, um, but again, like she was so like, if you want to go do your own thing, that's fine with me too. No hard feelings. So like, we're just always very open and honest with each other. So when she was going to be doing this tour, like coming back after three years of not being on tour, um, she was like, it's yours if you want it, but no pressure. And it's like, of course I want to go on tour. It's like the most fucking fun thing ever. It's a shit ton of work, but it's like, it's so fun. You know, you also have another thing in common that I just realized too, because you gave us this whole backstory about Sirius and how, you know, there was a moment where you're like, okay, well, I'm not with them anymore. And it could have been handled differently. And you learned from what went on in that situation. You grew from it, you evolved, and now you're just absolutely thriving and some could even say that Stasi came out of a very similar situation where mm-hmm. she had to learn, grow, and evolve. And then she comes out and it's boom, off with my head, New York Times bestseller. We're back on the tour again. This can't be surprising to you, but it, it's just another another thing for you two to sort of just bond on. It like connects you. Yep, I know. Well, I, I have a lot of friends in this industry. This is kind of like, I, I think that when it comes to anybody who's really successful, all people can see is like their high moments. But like, I think that people continue to grow and succeed because of those low moments. You know, I got fired from Sirius. Stassi went through what she went through. A girl with no jobs when I really good friends. She had, you know, uh, I mean, a really tough situation for a while. Hannah Burner is another one of my best friends. We saw that she actually, Hannah was just on Stassi's podcast. Everybody should go listen to it. It was like the most fucking inspiring podcast I've ever listened to. And it was interesting because they were both talking about being, you know, formerly on Bravo and what that was like for them and how it is now in their friend groups. And do they watch reality TV anymore? Really interesting. But like with Hannah, I remember when Hannah got fired off Summer House, I was really worried about her. And it was like kind of in the pandemic and, you know, cut to now. Hannah is, I mean, selling out comedy shows by herself. Hannah has 2.5 million followers on fucking TikTok. Hannah is crushing. And so it's really interesting because I'm looking around at all my people and I'm like, damn, we've all been on kind of like, it's different, but also like similar journeys of like, when you think that like you're knocked down and how will you ever recover? You end up coming back like, you come back for sure, but almost even more strong because it builds up that resilience. But I think our failures in life in general are the things that actually make us better in the long run, you know? Right. No, of course. And, you know, there will always be people, especially in this business, who are 
one quick to, you know, rip someone's head off. Some people are rooting for you to win. And there are many people who are rooting for you to fail. And yes. that's really unfortunate, but that's just the world that we live in. And I think that the way, especially your story is so inspiring. And I, again, can totally see how you connected on this. And by the way, I just want to say too, I know you are a very busy woman and I know that you have a lot going on. So I don't want to keep much more of your time, but I did want for anyone watching, since you are more inside behind the lines, I wanted to get a tidbit of what the tour was going to be like and what we could expect, which you touched on. But then since you have that insider perspective in a friendship with Stassi and Bo, for the people who might still put her in a certain box, is there like a positive thing that you can share that maybe you think fans or people who watched the show might not know about her? Something to give them like, you know, because who better than to ask you? Right. Right. Well, we always think we know somebody, but I think you really you learn about people from talking to their friends and family. That's when you really find out somebody's true character. Stassi is really down to earth, like a really down to earth person. She, I mean, and I use this word and this is a compliment because I think that people think, especially people on reality TV are like crazy or, you know, um, wild or you want to go to the extremes of people's personality, but Stassi's like incredibly normal. Like my mom and dad, when they, cause she was at our wedding, um, mine and my wife's wedding, it was like two years ago. It was very small. It was like 15 people. Um, and Stassi and Bo were kind of like the only friends I invited uh, for like my side, um, to the wedding. And my parents were just like, Stassi and Bo are so nice and so normal and so down to earth. Cause you know, people are like a person from a reality TV show, a star, she has 3 million followers on Instagram. Like she's gonna be coming. And I think you just automatically think they're gonna be a diva. They're gonna like, you know, be kind of um, just like closed off maybe. And it, it would make sense for someone to be like that given all that these, you know, reality TV people go through or celebrities go through. But like, my parents were just shook at how like normal and down to earth and sweet and kind Stassi and Bo were. And they really are. Stassi is one of the greatest friends that I've ever had. And she's like, also, she is a star, but she is so supportive. Do you know what I mean? Like she doesn't ever act better than anybody. And again, like, it's so funny because with this whole VPR scandal, you know, that's Oof. going on right now, mm-hmm. people are now going back and watching um Vanderpump rule from like season one because people are like what's all this about even even Bravo fans know what's going on with the scandal of all of it all so people are kind of going back now and it's funny because now when people go back they watch season one and it's season one Stassi right so it's like that's your best friend I remember I had cousins who were like oh my god I watch Vanderpump rules your best friend is Stassi like what is she like and it's like she's wonderful you know that was and also I'm not like that like Stassi did those things in season one but like Again, how many years ago was that? You know, right. like you grow. she's grown, she's evolved. She's a mother now. She's about to have a second child. Like those are things that, I mean, they change a person. But I will say even like in the early years of VPR, cause I met her season one, she's always been amazing. Somebody said to me too, one time, and I believe this, that when you watch reality TV, the person that seems like the nicest is usually like the most fucked up. Cause they're like very good at manipulating um the producers and the and the audience and usually the person that looks like the biggest bitch on the show is actually like the nicest most down to earth in real life because they just kind of like they like they're not being manipulative they're just being like honest and it's very easy to twist that honesty into you know somebody coming across as bitchy so that's what i would say when it comes to her all right you have a great way of explaining things. And honestly, I think it's great for the fans, our viewers, subscribers, this entire community to be able to hear your perspective on this and also to encourage them if they did not catch the first tour, or even if they did, this is a totally new show. We have a lot to look forward to. Right now you have 24 dates on the book. You are booked and busy. You have a lot going yes. on. Yes. Taylor, thank you so much for joining me. This this was amazing. I feel I feel like I really, I like made a friend and learned so much. <laughs> Thank you. Let me just also real quick say, um, because I don't think I emphasize this enough. The tour is fun. It's like a night out with the gals. And even though Stassi can't drink, all the rest of us still can. (laughs) So Bo and I'll be drinking apple spritzes. Bo will be drinking his tequilas. The audience, like, it's a fucking party. There's like, there's laughter. There's live podcasting. There's um, 
maybe some music in your future. Like it's a fun night out. It's a girl's night out. So if I didn't make that clear, I just wanted to make sure I hammered that home. I'm so excited to come to the Fort Lauderdale show. I, I knew I was, I was trying to pick, I'm literally smack dab in the middle of Orlando and Fort Lauderdale. And I was like, mm. so I'm coming with my cousin and my husband. And I was like, I just, I want to get Taylor on to talk about the show before we actually go to the show. Because I want to do like a behind the scenes going to it. Just, you know, I want to see yes. what it's all about. I'm excited. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm so excited you're coming. Hopefully I'll get a chance to meet you and um, like in person, in person. And yes. yeah. It's going to be a vibe for sure. Absolutely. Taylor, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and we're sending you all of the positive vibes for the baby making. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. All right. Thank you, Taylor.